Amen, family. Boy, I wish that those who are watching online, if you just could have heard us singing, my God is awesome. God is good and all the time. My God is good. Amen. It's good to be in the kingdom of God. Uh, I am so grateful. I cannot express gratitude enough for the brothers stepping in while I did my knee replacement and preaching and teaching and encouraging the body of Christ. They have done a phenomenal job. Amen. Amen. This week, I'm really excited about uh, for the next two weeks. Uh, this week, we had a father and son combination. And, uh, and uh, one of our youngest guys that's speaking is Nas. And uh, I'm really excited about Nasir bringing the word this morning. And then his dad going to come behind him and bring the message to the end. And, uh, and then I, I, I asked Royal to come up and pray for them. Uh, I, I just want y'all to know that uh, how proud I am of Nasir. Uh, this young man also is getting married, for those online that don't know. He's getting married in November. Yep. What's the date again? November 6th. And uh, I'm excited. I was baptized November 3rd. So <laughs> about 40 years ago. Though. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm so encouraged by you, brother. And I'm just so proud of what God is doing in your life and, and your, you and your father. And I'm, I'm excited by us having an opportunity to hear uh, one of our youngest uh, uh, members and one of our youngest uh, single professional guys is getting married. Share the word of God for, to us this morning. Amen. So let's open wide our hearts. Uh, let's... Um, Really, uh, uh, the, the title alone gets me fired up. Uh, give me that title again, Nas. The examples we set. The examples we set. My God, buckle up and get ready. I'm looking forward to God challenging us by the examples that we set. Amen. How we live our lives and what people see in us. And as those of us are Christians, we need to be living like Christians. Because our example, be who you say you are, is everything. And that's what God expects from us. Amen. So I ask not, before he come and bring the word, I ask uh, one of our other elders to come and pray for the message. Pray for our hearts. Uh, and then we got to treat after the message. Uh, we're looking forward to our brother, uh, uh, future brother, but soon to be brother Reuben and his wife Ebony getting baptized here at church. Amen. God is good. And all the time. Amen. So I'm looking forward to uh, um, having that and then uh, being able to you see how they make their uh, uh, confession and then we'll make sure we put up also their baptism for everybody to see. Amen. But now I'm asking uh, our elder to come and pray for our hearts and pray for Ken and Nas. They bring the message to us. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Royale. I'm one of the elders that serves here at the River City Christian Ministries. And I do have the honor and the uh, privilege of praying before the message. Amen. Uh, let's go to God in prayer. Our dear Holy Father, we thank you so much for this time that we're able to hear the word, Father, that we pray as Ken and Nas preach the word, Father, that we will be taught, taught from the words that you have put down, Father, for allowing us to be able to be obedient to those scriptures, Father. I pray that we'll take these scriptures, Father, and apply it to our lives, not just merely just hear the word, not look, look intently into the mirror and walk away, but we will be able to adjust to what you are saying to us, Father. I pray that we open our hearts wide. We're very grateful for the opportunity that Father and Son can come and be able to be a tag team yes. and to be able to present the word to us, Father, on the examples that we need to set for one another. So we thank you for the title. I am moved by that alone. And I pray that we'll be moved today, Father, that we'll walk out today, change men and women because of what we hear today, Father. So we thank you and we love you. We give you the praise, honor, and glory. And we do pray all this in your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon. <laughs> Here we go. Well, my name is Nasir Williams, and uh, I will be doing the part, part of the message. Um, and I just want to thank the leadership again just for allowing me to be able to do this and uh, just to share my thoughts, me and my dad, uh, just to share our thoughts. Um, and again, the, the title of the lesson today will be The Examples That We Set. And so we're going to start with a definition. 
I like my definitions. Uh, the definition of an example. A person or thing regarded in terms to be imitated or the likelihood of their being imitated. Um, and thinking of that, uh, just in my life, I've had numerous uh, people in my life, uh, whether it be people here or people uh, in my home or uh, even people on social media uh, that um, I'd, I'd like to emulate, emulate um, whether it be from fitness or, or something in, a, uh, in life or it be spiritual or financial um, and things of that nature. Um, but the first uh, uh, example that really anybody ever has um, to go off of is those who raised us, those who raised uh, uh, them and th those who taught them uh, from the very beginning. Uh, and for me, it would be my parents. Um, and so if we could turn to uh, John 5, uh, verse 19. John 5, verse 19. Jesus gave them this answer. Very truly, I tell you, the son can do nothing by himself. He can, he can do only what he sees his father doing. Because whatever the father does, the son also does. Um, and as, as a child, uh, and, and, as a, <laughs> and as, as a child, and I, uh, just as children, we we watch those around us um, and we absorb all that information when we take it in. Um, and I know for me, when I, when I was younger, I say it like I'm really that old, um, <laughs> but <laughs> uh, when I was younger, my, my parents, uh, they taught me right from wrong. Um, they taught me how to be a man, how to be a good Samaritan and how to be a man of God. Um, but they didn't just teach me uh, by saying, uh, they taught by doing. And, and so the first, my first point is you can't say one thing and do another. So, um, so as many of you know, my dad is not my biological father. Uh, no, you can't tell by looking at us. <laughs> but... Um, but that didn't stop him from teaching me, uh, uh, from teaching me God and from disciplining me in love. Uh, I remember there was a time my dad said that um, as far as disciplining goes, he talked to my mom before they got married and that, uh, you know, there would be a time where I would have to be disciplined. And um, that, did, that time did present itself many occasions. Uh, <laughs> it, it did present itself, but I... Uh, we overcame, over <laughs> um, many a time where he would discipline me in love, um, you know, where you would not spare the rod. He would, I would, I would get those spankings. I didn't get as much, but I got spankings. <laughs> um, you know, the, the phrase, this will hurt me more than it hurts you. Um, you see, yeah, you know, I had a tear in his eye, one single tear in his eye. <laughs> this will hurt me more than it'll hurt you. And at the time, I was like, nah, I don't, I don't see, because I'm the one. But, <laughs> but here I am, and you know, growing now, being more mature, I know that it did hurt him more, uh, just because he loved me and he didn't want to see me go through that. But he knew that if I didn't go through that. I want to be, I want to be taught. I want to be, learn uh, how to do it the right way. Uh, and so, if we can go to Titus chapter two, uh, verse six. Titus chapter two, verse six. Uh, similarly. Encourage the young men to be self-controlled. In everything, set them an example by doing what is good. In your teaching, show them integrity, seriousness, and soundness of speech 
that cannot be condemned so that those who oppose you may be ashamed because they have nothing bad to say about us. Um, and growing up, I, I, did have to, I did have to learn. I had to, I had to um, be taught how to do things, um, how to behave in certain places, how to, how to do right from wrong, how to, um, just how to, how to be, how to be in general, how to be just a person. Um, but I wanted, I wanted to know how to do those things if I didn't have an example to do them. If I, if I didn't have an example to show me how to do it. Uh, my dad, he was, not, uh, he was not perfect by any means. Um, you know, he, he, had his fault, he has his faults, but in, in saying that, he is a man of God. And he is an example of what it is, of, uh, of what it is to be a man of God. And he, he taught me that, he taught my sister that, uh, my mom and, and just many others that he uh, touches. Um, and I just pray that, uh, that we know, that I uh, just know that every day, uh, just for myself. Um, but again, as I said before, kids are always watching you. Uh, kids are sponges. Uh, a sponge absorbs everything. Uh, Mr. Mark talks about how Mike um, always, uh, always seems to get, get the bad more when he was younger <laughs> than the good. <laughs> and that was true for me too. But when you have that good example, like Pastor Mark, like, uh, like my dad, um, like Mr. Sawa, um, just so many people that, that, we're, that when, you, when you have that good example, even when you get the, get the bad, you're gonna eventually get that good along with it. And so, just as Christians, as, um, as people about to be Christians, um, you know, that's how we should be. We should always wanna try and imitate um, those around us that, that have those good characteristics. We should always want to imitate those in the Bible um, that, that, have done, that have done this, that have lived it and, and died for it. Yeah. Um, but in saying that we need to imitate the, uh, those traits, you know, we have to make sure, are we imitating the right traits? Are we imitating the traits that we that we can use to succeed in, in life as a Christian, in life as, a, as, as someone who, who wants to be an example. You know, have you ever heard of the phrase, I know you have, if your friend jumped off a bridge, would you do it? <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, would you? You know, yeah. <laughs> so when, when you become a Christian, um, is your... And you could put anything in that statement, you know, would you, if your friend did drugs, would you do it, you know, something like that. But when you become a Christian, you study the Bible, you study the cost of what it takes to be a Christian. And one of the costs of being a Christian, it's like an underlying, uh, an underlying message, an underlying meaning that you have to be an example to those around you. That is a cost of being a Christian. You have to be, a, yes, you have to be an example. And talking about cost, we will go to Luke 14, uh, verse 28. Let me know if I move it too fast. <laughs> right. Luke 14, verse 28 through 33. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? For if you lay the foundation and are not able to finish, to, to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule you, saying this person began to build and wasn't able to finish. Or suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Won't he first sit down and consider whether he is able to, able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming against them with 20,000? If he is not able, he will send a delegation while the other is still a long way off and will ask for terms of peace. In the same way, those of you who do not give up everything you can, everything you cannot have, or sorry, in the same way, those of you who do not give up everything you have cannot be my disciples. There we go. <laughs> um, to be an, again, to be a Christian is to be an example. 
around uh, it, to be an example for those in your household, for those around you at work, at school. Um, it is. It, it's a different. It's a lifestyle choice, and it's something that people can emulate. Something that people can see. Um, but it's something that you have to choose yourself. It's when you, when talking about an example, an example is just an example. When you're doing a math problem, you have an example in your workbook. You don't have to do it that way. It's just there because you may need to do it that way. But for yourself as a Christian, for me as a Christian, it's my walk with God was mine or is mine. And so we're going to go on to my second point of choosing for yourself. To, uh, to choose for yourself and to, to see that whether you go by your example or by, um, by your own accord, your results and your consequences for that decision are yours. And so if we could go to Joshua 24, verse... 14. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 24. Verse 14. Joshua 24, verse 14 through 15. Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the Throw away the gods your ancestors worshipped beyond the Euphrates, beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. And in talking about serving and talking about serving the Lord and talking about choosing for yourself um, to serve the Lord, um, I and, and when I thought about my life and how I had to I, I had to come to a sort of a crossroads um, in in deciding to choose in, in deciding to choose for myself uh, that I wanted to be with God. Um, it, it was my own decision, you know, it was of my own accord. Um, and when I became, when I turned 18 and, um, you know, I was still living at my parents' house, but, you know, a lot of, a lot changed in my relationship with my parents. Um, just as far as me getting more freedoms, I guess you would say, freedoms and, um, and things that, you know, I would still have to wash the dishes and take out the trash, like, you know, of course, I live there. I'm, but, uh, <laughs> but, you know, I was, it was more, it wasn't more of commands or, or things that I had to do. It was a suggestion or advice. It was things that, that, uh, my parents would say, Hey, maybe you should do this. Uh, maybe, maybe you got a, I mean, you've got one or two options type of thing, but those one or two options were mine. They were my decisions to make. If I, if, if I didn't want to follow what my parents said, that's, that was my choice. Um, and so again, I'm at a crossroads of, of being a Christian that do I want to follow the flesh or do I want to follow the spirit? And that's something for you to decide. We can't, I, I can't tell you to take that initial step. Um, only you can take that initial step. Only, only you can take the steps thereafter. We can help you. Um, uh, Chris, uh, uh, equated, um, the narrow path as something that, you know, you can only walk one at a time through the narrow path. We got, you have someone in front of you that can help you, someone behind you, but you're the one walking. Jesus can be beside you because Jesus is Jesus. He can, he can walk, he can float. <laughs> but we can only help you so far. You got to do it. You got to take that step. <laughs> and um, speaking of Jesus, uh, our ultimate example is Jesus. Our ultimate example is Jesus because he, he went through this world of sin without even a hint of it. And he taught so many people and there were people that fell away and there were people that chose to do their own thing. 
but there were people who chose to do what God said and their lives were blessed and they are able to to go to heaven because of that and no we don't have Jesus in our in our physical presence but we do have the Bible and if we could turn to my last scripture uh, James 1 James 1, verse 22 through 25. Do not merely listen to the word, and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word, but does not do what it says, is like someone who looks at his face in the mirror, and after, all, and after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law, that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will, they will be blessed in what they do. The Bible is, was the tool that was given to us. It was our blueprint. It is our example. It, it, it shows us everything that we need to be, to be a Christian and to be someone that can be an example for others. So don't... Don't forget to read. Don't forget to, to pray. Don't forget to call. Don't forget to, to, to encourage one another. You know, there are so many ways you can be an example to someone. Even giving them a ride um, is an example yeah. for someone. And you, you just don't know how you're going to help anybody. Uh, so thank you. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, my name is Kenyatta Charlie. <laughs> And the young man you just heard speak is my son, Nasir Williams. And what is so awesome is that one thing I want us all to get and understand is that your family is prepared the way it is to give God glory. Yes. Hold that. Take that. Your family, the way it is, where it is right now, is designed to give God glory. And I say that because as parents, sometimes we will look and see, well, because I don't look like this or because I did this or this happened, God no longer can use me. But you'll be used in a way that those that you're looking at cannot be used for God's glory. I have a blended family. My wife became pregnant with Nasir out of high school. Now, that right there, people would be like, they can think whatever they want to think. But because she turned her life over to God and said, you know what, God, I have another chance. My life is not done. And I know the standards that I'm setting for myself. That then allowed me to be a young man to say, okay, God, I want to do things right. And allow me to have the character as a young man. To want to desire to have a godly wife. Being celibate for four years. Me and God. And not knowing that God designed all the time for me to raise that young man over there. So I do want us to know that when it says all things have become new, all things become new. Yes. I have one point. And in the message that Nasir started off with, the example we set, my one point is the example we follow is the example we are teaching our kids to follow. I think of all the great people, I mean, I, you know, I, there are a lot of people, as Nasir said, there's a one word, emulate. But to follow an example completely, there is only one example to follow in its entirety. And that's Jesus Christ. Now, I take nothing from those that have that acquired that have great work ethics. Michael Jordan is that's the generation when we look at Michael Jordan and what he's done on the court. But I don't want to go through a divorce. That's not that that's not nothing against that man. I have my own sins. I would love to have the tenacity of Kobe Bryant, but I don't ever want to cheat on my wife. And the only reason I use those two examples is not to tear them down is because they have lifted up very high. But who are the examples that we lift up very high in the kingdom? Who are the people that you look at to say, man, you know what? I want a pattern and desire to follow after that person as they follow God. I grew up very old school. You know, we rode bikes. Any adult could correct you. But as adults, I grew up in that generation where that you had the, the parents or the uncles that could say, you know, I better not see you doing what I'm doing right now. you would be like, well, man, how are you going to tell me not to do what you're doing, but you're doing the very thing you're telling me not to do? 
But in becoming a Christian, that could no longer be used. That's right. I couldn't say that. We can't say that. That's right. I'll tell you the best compliment I ever got about Nasir. Actually, I heard from Simone, came from Brian. Brian was like, man, who is this dude, Nasir? Man, you know, he is sharp little dude, man. You know, young dude coming through, man. And, you know, we got to get him hooked up, man. You know, and stuff like that. They were like, well, he here with his parents. His parents? <laughs> like a dude 20 years old. The dude's this young single man. I see him coming in here, in and out by himself. Like, who's his mom and dad? Like, Ken and Shadari. He's like, what? Ken and Shadari? But it showed me that I became less, that God became more. It showed me that, you know what? Outside of me, God is now being glorified through his life. And I say that because as parents and as adults, our children become these extensions of ourselves. They become the things that we almost base ourselves off of how we're viewed and how we're seen. And I learned very early that even in my life, when I pass, they are still here following their own journey, following God. Yeah. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse one. This is a very short scripture. But this is one of the scriptures I have fought to fight with that we all must. For our households, for those around us and definitely for our children. In first Corinthians chapter 11, verse one, it says, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. Well, how do I follow the example of Christ? I think Jamie said it very, uh, the first thing this morning when he said, submit, resist, and flee. Yes. We're just going to stick with submit first. Come on. We have to submit everything as adults and parents and our children to God. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 through 17, we read this verse that we read it so much with people who are studying the Bible, new Christians. But how much more for your own household? Yeah, that's right. The Bible says all scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Amen. My first good work that God has given me and challenge is at my home. Amen. That is my first good work. I don't care how many people I save out of a fire. I don't care how many people I may resuscitate back to life in the back of a rescue. If I lose my family by not leading them to God, what have I done and what is it for? What is it for? In Proverbs chapter two, no, Proverbs chapter 22, verse six. I have to hold on to the scripture because I think sometimes, you know, we do everything and we're like, okay, God, I did this, I did this, I checked this, I checked that. And we'll be like, okay, God, wait for the finished results. Like, it's like sometimes we're almost waiting for the cake to come out the oven. And God's like, well, you're trying to go off of your time. I've got my own time. I only need you to do what I've commanded and taught you to do. In Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6, it says, start children off the way they should go. And even when they are old, they will not turn from it. I hold this scripture and what lets me know this scripture is true is myself. And I don't have to say this to anyone else or anybody else. Because I remember growing up in church. I remember all the things that I did and thought I did that made me feel religious, made me feel close to God. But when I really got to know God. I got to see the things that were taught to me, even though I may have gathered away and strayed from them, they were still there. And just as Nasir said, they have to make a choice. The thing that I have to make sure that I do and that we do is instruct them where that when they make that choice, they can simply say, son, daughter, I've taught you everything that God's word says. I think sometimes we get very fearful when we see them not doing or having the outcome or how other people may view. And you have to be able to let that go because then it shows it is about you right. instead of about God. Right. Come on. The biggest thing that we can continue to do is teach our children, showing them by an example, by what we do. That's right. 
We're going to read Titus chapter two, verse six through eight, because Nasir just read that. We're going to read it again. I actually had it. I was it was something when I was putting this together. I called him. I said, hey, son, I said, did you use Titus chapter six, verse eight? He's like, yeah, dad. I said, all right, well, I'm going to use it again, too. <laughs> it says similarly encourage the young men to be self-controlled in everything. Set them an example by doing what is good. In your teaching, okay, so we are teachers. In your teaching, show integrity, seriousness, and soundness of speech that cannot be condemned so that those who oppose you may be ashamed because they have nothing bad to say about us. I take joy in seeing all of our children when they draw and take God's word and apply it to their lives. It encourages me. But also, it does hurt when I see that some may not. But it does not ever change our love for them. It doesn't. Please, they need to hear that. Our love should never change because God love doesn't change. God is still giving an opportunity and a time for our children, even for us to change and grow and draw back to him. Every day. I love the book of Proverbs. I've always used Proverbs a lot with my children. And in Proverbs chapter one, verse one through seven, it says the proverb of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel. And I'm sorry if it feels like I'm going fast, but I'll give you some time. Proverbs chapter one, verse one through seven. I, I apologize. I, uh, I have a tablet. Yeah, I got the tablet. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Holding that up doesn't have the same look as this. I, I sure just did this. That looks so much. That looks so much better. It really does. But I, I'm sorry. I, I'm a tablet person. <laughs> but we're going to read. It says in Proverbs chapter one, verse one through seven, it says the Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, for gaining wisdom and instruction for understanding words of insight. For receiving instruction in prudent behavior, doing what is right and just and fair. For giving prudence to those who are simple, knowledge and discretion to the young. Let the wise listen and add to their learning and let the discerning get guidance. Now, right there, it's pretty much a template of just like how to be a great person. Man, I'm going to teach my kids how to obey, teach them how to stay out of trouble. Hey, let's do the right thing. Who are your friends? I don't like that young girl. I don't like that young man. Who are their parents? That's pretty much that. But we're going to keep reading. Because in verse 6 it says, For understanding proverbs and parables, the sayings and riddles of the wise, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. We have to teach our children to fear God. And if you don't fear God, they won't fear God. If you don't fear God, your children will not fear God. What I love about fearing God is that you truly get to understand that everything you have comes from God. I remember Kyla when we had our apartment, we were staying off of Hodges. And I really got it really taking me through some points. I lost a house on the west side, had to give it up. I mean, just couldn't afford it. Credit was wrecked. I'm down on my knees praying, crying to God, saying, please, God, take this house from over me. My pride, my sense of wanting to be wanting people to think I have a house. God, my sin has brought my family to this point. So God gave me a I think it's called a, a 1099 C or something, but it's when it's called a D and Lude where they took the house from off of us. I don't even think Shadarian and the kids really even truly knew. I was at house because uh, I burnt my hands and I'm just weeping to God. And God said, okay, Ken, I won't punish your family for your sin. He really did. God allowed that to be wiped out. And we were in an apartment. And I let anything, I said, God, as long as you have provided a roof over us, I am grateful. I remember Kyla coming to me saying, hey, Dad. Do you think we're ever going to move back in our house? I said, Kyla, I said, if it's God's will, we will. I said, but you know what? If he never does, we have a place to stay and we're going to be grateful. 
I said that with all the confidence that even if you've been to my house now and I will steal off Hodges, nothing changed. Because I knew that everything comes from God. And I wanted my kids to understand and know that everything comes from God. That comes from us teaching, but also being that example of showing that, hey, everything comes from God and you see it from how I live my life. And guess what? We're going to praise and thank God. Oh, this came through. Guess what? Thank God. We're going to praise God. In Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 16, this is a very powerful scripture. And I think some parents need to hear this, but I also know kids need to hear this also when they get to a certain age. I think Jamie said something very profound. He said, you know, I, I, when my kids get to a certain age, I have to be very straight. And in Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 16, it says, the father shall not be put to death for the children, neither shall the children be put to death for the father. Every man shall be put to death for his own sins. How many of you read that scripture to your children yet? <laughs> Haven't? Because eventually our children have to understand that, hey, you are now at the point that you are now standing before God. I know when Nasir mentioned said that when he turned 18, I gave him more freedoms. No, I was like, son, I got to give you the opportunity to practice what we taught you. Yeah. And now your out. And now your outcomes will be your outcomes. Now, I didn't say that in the sense of wanting him to fail. I said it with the sense of urgency, the sense of caring and sense of, hey, son, you know, I've talked very openly about my past. Share with him about his mom. I said, son, I said, you know, your mom got pregnant with you and, you know, we didn't get married till, we were, till you were four years old. He was like, yeah. I said, well, son, I waited for your mom. We were like, OK. I said, well, guess what? I want to offer you the same challenge. I said, but it's your choice. I want to offer you the same challenge to respect that I showed your mom and the honor that I showed your mom. I hopefully that you will show that to someone else down the line. Now, I'm not going to sit up here and tell you like a pat on my back because guess what it's a decision that he had to make it was a decision that he had to make based off of God's word in Luke chapter 2 verse 48 through 52 I had my mind kind of opened up because I, I sometimes have to think about I thought about how it was when Jesus was young and Jesus was born in a blended family. He really was. Joseph was not his biological dad. Mary was pregnant with him to be married. Joseph didn't even almost want to marry her based off the fact that she was pregnant. Now, I'm not saying anything to be shocking. This is all biblical. They're scriptures. But go and read in Luke chapter 2, verse 48 through 52. And this here, I, want, I really want the children to hear this. In verse 48, it says, when his parents saw him, they were astonished. Now, this is Jesus when he was at the temple. This is where Jesus got lost and they couldn't find him. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, son, why have you treated us like this? So Mary's like, man, I, I feel like you disobeyed us. Why, why are you not with us? You should be here with us. Like, we're worried. Your father... Who are we talking about? Who's his father? Who? Joseph. Joseph. She's referencing Joseph. Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Why were you searching for me? He asked. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? Amen. But they did not understand what he was saying to them. Then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart, and Jesus grew in wisdom and stature in favor with God and man. Even Jesus was obedient to his earthly parents that God placed him under care. How much more should you as children be obedient to your parents? Amen. And the other thing about it, Jesus chose. He submitted because he knew he was the son of God, but still he submitted. He said, you know what? I'm going to be obedient to them. 
I am under them. They are my parents. They're here to raise me. And he was raised. I had a good friend of mine this month to pass. If, you, if you've heard in the news, there was a firefighter named uh, Mario Moya that passed on August 17th. And you know what tends to come up in our minds? The first thing we think of is the kids. And, you know, will they be taken care of financially? You know, how are things going to go? But my heart wondered, man, who are there to be the example for those kids? I mean, if I came back and said, oh, man, it's fine. He had a great, uh, his pension's going to cover. And, man, he's got an insurance policy. He made sure they were well taken care of. But who's going to be the example for those kids? I don't say that to shock or to, to, do th to, to worry you. But I say that in the sense for us to change our mindset of what it is, what's really important in, tr in tr taking care of our families. What is really going to be the thing that takes care? My last scripture, and this is how I'm going to close out. This is for us parents. It's in James chapter 4, verse 13 through 15. Uh, turning 46 this year has really made me realize, just as Mark says sometimes, man, you know, I'm, I'm almost on the back end. And we don't say that. We, we, it may sound very jokingly, but we really do take, take account of where we are in our lives and what's important. It says, now listen, you who say today or tomorrow we will go to this city or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why? You do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while, then vanishes. I want to make sure that the time that I appear here for a little while, that it has a potent meaning, that it makes a difference. That is an example for my family. That is an example for God and the people that he placed me around so that when I do leave finally and I stand before God, he can say, well done, good and faithful servant. And that that can be said with those I love right beside me. And to God be the glory. Yeah. I'm going to pray for our message. Father God, thank you so much for uh, this time, God. God, we thank you for your son, Jesus, being the ultimate example. God, we thank you for the relationship between you and Jesus. And God, how much he loved you. And God, how you loved him. And God, how you've given us everything that we need, God, in your word uh, to have the same relationship, God. That you've given us families, God, uh, to experience the joy of, uh, of life. But God, you've, always given, you've also given us instructions, God, to raise our families, God, to be godly, to, have, to know who you are, God, and to hopefully desire to have a relationship with you. God, I pray that by the lives that we live, being examples, God, that they desire to have a relationship. But I pray that we always continue teaching, uh, instructing, but most important of all, God, loving just as you love, uh, knowing, God, that everything is to your glory and knowing that you have a plan for all of us, God, even though that we may not even see it. But we trust and know and believe that you do have a plan. We give you the praise, honor, and glory. We love you. And it's these things we pray in your son's name. Amen. 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 Uh, my name is Tim Young. I'm the other deacon in the church, one of the other deacons. And um, I'm going to respond to uh, the message. Amen. Uh, just the title alone blows, blew me away when I heard it. Uh, the, the examples we set. You know, and uh, Nas, it was really to listen to hear you I'm thinking you know just how much you've grown and how much when I when I hear both of you speak how important it is the way we live our lives as fathers you know and and so the first point you can't say one thing and do another that <laughs> I mean that that that's the way we, we have to think about who's watching us and, and that we're always being watched not just you know and, and then you brought the next point to be a Christian is to be an example so we got to think about not only am I a father not only the, the way I live affects the way my children my wife and everyone around me work and everything but being a Christian being the fact that I'm I call myself a Christian and I'm supposed to be following Jesus right and so the way I live my life I mean it just it just it convicts me, it encourages me all at the same time. Amen. Uh, and uh, Ken, 
my first responsibility is my family. And I appreciate you telling us that and helping, helping me to understand that that's, that's the first thing I've got to focus on because um, I can't help anyone else if I'm not helping my own family and, and myself, amen. So awesome job, I'm, thank you so much. And I want to encourage you, everyone in fellowship, just share. Share with each other about what you got from this as well. I think it was an awesome and powerful message. Amen. Amen. Uh, well, for our, um, for our announcements, uh, we ha we're going to continue to do midweek online. Um, this coming up for this month is going to be Tremaine and myself. And so we're excited. Uh, we are, the title um, of this is uh, uh, Our Acknowledgement. I'm sorry, acknowledging our need for Jesus. I'm sorry, it didn't, didn't come to my head right away. Acknowledging our need for Jesus and there'll be several subtopics in there as well, amen? Uh, and now we have an exciting news that we have a baptism, amen? And so uh, Mark is gonna come up and, and talk to us at this point, amen? Amen, family. They're changing and getting ready and, uh, and then also all the kids on the other side, uh, our children ministry also coming over uh, to participate with us here and be, participate and be a part of what we got going on. I wanna uh, take a moment and respond to the message also. Uh, I, I'm just so grateful, uh, Nas and Ken, uh, your words and, and son, that was incredible. Um, uh, man, yeah, just your title alone uh, was just inspiring. And appreciate you taking time out uh, to teach and encourage and preach the word. Uh, uh, when I think of you, I love the scripture and uh, talks about that. Don't let anyone look down on you because you're young, but set an example for them in your speech and life and your purity. And you've done that. And I'm very grateful for that and very proud of you, son. Great job. Appreciate you. <laughs> you know, and, uh, and y'all come on in. And uh, it's great to have our kids class come on over. And then I think the other thing, it, it's always encouraging to hear about, you know, uh, raising our kids and uh, our goal is heaven, right? And our goal is, you know, as parents, we not only just want to go to heaven, we want our children to go to heaven with us. You know, and, uh, and then as we grow as parents and meet other people we love, we, we want to take as many as we can to heaven. But when we look at our family, there's, I, I've never met a parent that don't want their kids to go to heaven with them. You know, and I say that to your parents, there was a lot in that lesson, and, then, and there's something you really got to gr grasp. Um, you want your kids to go to heaven, but don't enable them. Don't ever enable your kids from, not from, from going to heaven. You got to let your children go through what they go through from their bad decisions. You can't bail them out all the time. Because if you do, then they're going to keep making those bad decisions. Uh, the scripture I have to prove that, the prodigal son. It's the prodigal son. You can look at it. The father did not stop. He, that son, he wanted his wealth. And I want it now. What did the father do? Give it to him and say, go ahead. And the scripture said, the father never ran after his child to make him come back. That child had to go and squander all his wealth and be in the pigsty and go like, what in the world I'm doing? I know where the truth is. I know who my family, I know my father. I just need to repent and go home. And he had to come to his senses on that. We got to allow our children to come to their senses. You got to allow it. You, you cannot enable them through all their mistakes. Yeah, man, I told you many times, I told my son one time, man, if you ever go to jail, you gonna, I'm never bailing you out. You're going to stay there. You're going to pay your, your time, your dues. I'm not taking my money and, and keep getting you out of jail. You have lost your mind. You will pay your dues. Now, I'm going to come and pray with you. I'm going to love you. But you got to learn your lesson. That you don't do those things. And I never forget Michael looking at me one day to my dad. You do that for real? So help me God or let me die. I am not bailing you out. I don't see God. I didn't see God, the prodigal son. The guy, father, go bail his son out. He let him learn his lesson, come home so he can stay faithful. And so kids, we love you, but I pray to God that your parents are not enablers. No, they didn't need to allow you to learn your lessons the hard way and be there as parents to teach you, you don't do those things. 
We're there to encourage you spiritually, but we're not there to fix all your problems. Especially as you become an adult now. When they're younger than adult age, we got to do some bailing out. We got to teach. Yeah. But you got to bail out in a way that they don't keep going back to that. Amen. You understand, parents? Yeah. It's our responsibility to train our kids up in the Lord. And so, man, I already don't knock this thing off, Tim. I just get fired up. That'd be the spirit. I don't know it till it happens. But thank y'all so much for what you shared. If I can get Reuben and uh, Ebony to come on up. Uh, let me put my mask on now. I'm coming down. Take my glasses off because it get foggy and I can't see. Come on up. Come on up. Help me here, Reuben. Appreciate it. That one leg sometimes I don't want to bend. <laughs> You're on this side. And then, uh, do, do we have everything? We're down now? Amen. And so if I can get a, a saw Patrice to come over here and Vanita and um, Kenya, you know, I'm a, these are the extended family. I'm going to give them a chance to share. And, um, and Reuben and Ebony, I want to say as a minister and as also your, your brother here real soon, I'm just proud of you guys. Yes. Uh, you got in a fight and you fought, you know, and Kenny Shadarian. Come up, come up, because y'all was in all the studies that I'd like for y'all to uh, share uh, some for, with them. And then um, I, I'm just, uh, I was so encouraged how you respond so quickly to the word. Yeah. And even, Ebony, when you had your little bump and saying, hey, you know, I, I think I'm saved, but does it mean I'm lost? And I want you to know that when I, we were studying with your husband, he said something that stuck with me. He said, uh, she'll get it. <laughs> Because we're reading the word of God. She's going to get it. I'm like, whoa. He was that confident. You're going to get it. I'm like, okay. Because I shared it with them. I'm like, okay, now you're going to have to help your wife. And he's like, oh, I'm going to help her. But she's going to get it. Because that's what the word says. That speaks volume of you. I'm so encouraged. Hey, Amen. I'm just so encouraged by that. And Reuben, you become like a little brother to me already. He fits right in with the brothers. And, uh. I love his spirit, his love, and it's, and it's so funny. I got to tell, tell the church this. After the first time coming and meeting all the brothers and meeting everybody and Ken and they all got, got in the study. Where's Ken? Oh, Ken, Ken got in the study and, uh, and, and so Reuben started communicating to Saul like, that's my brother. This is my family. <laughs> Saul like, what? <laughs> Man, you ain't saved yet. <laughs> But it was just so encouraging how he took us, took us in, you know. And uh, uh, they went, I guess he went on a date. Yeah. They went on a date, and man, he started claiming everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and so Saba brought him to our house. We stood at our house and was leaving. I really got it when Saba said this. So we, we, he started leaving, and Saba, Saba turned to him and said, so now you're going to claim a preacher? <laughs> You, mean, you, you, you come to the house and you, you just claiming all my brothers. You got to get saved. <laughs> but that was so encouraging to me. How you just loved us and take us in. And I, I'm so proud of you in every way. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Uh, Brenda, Brenda, I'm let you go next so you can take Junior back and I, I switch with you. He's trying to get there with you. Okay. Boy, you just think you know me, don't you? Well, Ebony, I'm just very encouraged by your, um, your heart and your spirit. Um, you know what, what your husband said about you, that she'll get it. I think that's so true. One thing that I really, well, one of the things that I really appreciate and admire about you is your heart to want to know God mm -hmm. and to want to do what's right. I mean, I saw that from the first time we talked and in the Bible studies. And, and even though you did go through, you know, some, you had to really evaluate some things. But at the end of the day, you were like, if God says it, and that's what it's going to be. And it really helped you come to some deep convictions. And I just want to encourage you, as you make the commitment and say the words, Jesus is Lord, mm. you know, that's what it is. And uh, to really, I fall back on that every day. Jesus is Lord. And we kind of talked about that this morning. And I know you're a woman that really wants to make Jesus Lord of your life. And it's evident. And I see your love for God. And I just can't wait to really see what God is going to do, transform your family and your marriage and in your own life. So I'm just very encouraged by you. Just excited to be your sister. And uh, you got extended family here. I know you're far from home. 
but God gives us family. You know, we need it. I'm just excited to have you a part of our of our ministry and our family here. Amen. Love Amen. you. Amen. Take Junior back. Amen. I didn't uh, call Simone. Simone was in some of your studies too. Simone, you want to share? Well, come on up, Dan. Yeah. Hey guys, <laughs> this is some more of our family. Um, I think for me it was the last study. Y'all made me cry. I think I met Ruben a few times before and to see you now is like a whole new person. Mm. And I just love you guys so much. And I'm so um, just proud of who you are and just how much you just came in and you love me like I'm your own. You love me like I'm your blood, and I appreciate that. And I'm really excited for you guys, and I hope you guys feel this family. Because I know y'all struggle with being far from home. And we love y'all, and Baby D loves y'all too. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Just in case y'all didn't know, they're from Cleveland, Ohio. So, so now they, they're here with us. So Patrice needed some company, so God brought them on down. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm being worried about Cleveland all the time. <laughs> but it's great, amen? Amen. Let's, oh, can you come on up. Oh. Because <laughs> I love you guys so much. Um, I'm just, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm so grateful that you guys are here. God definitely does work things out in very mysterious ways. And I know, you, like everybody said, you guys are so far from home, but to have you here makes home feel complete for me. Um, I'm just grateful for the example that you guys are setting for baby Ruben. You know, my kids, they love their grandparents so much and they just have another God-fearing man setting an example alongside my son's papa really means a lot to me. Um, Ebony, I'm so excited to have this relationship that I get to experience through the cross with you, Dad, the same as you. I mean, <laughs> you know, I'm here for you guys always. I love y'all so much. Um, and I'm looking forward to just getting to experience God in a whole new way with you guys alongside me as my brother and sister in Christ. Amen. I love y'all so much. Awesome. awesome. Tim, you're using it. In the state, you want to share something? Yeah. Oh, no problem. Hey guys, I'm excited, and one thing I really want to share is uh, after I uh, after I preached, um, Ebony came up to me, and she said she came up to me, and this really encouraged me, saying that what I was saying it was like God was speaking right through me, and God was speaking directly to you, and that, that's that's anyone whenever you are, want to be a vessel and let allow God to use you, that's what you want is to have God use you and be able to help somebody when they need help, and so I was really encouraged by that. And Ruben, I'm excited to to be your brother as well, man. Amen. 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 You want to say something, Dana? Um, I was in their last study, and I, I was really grateful for that. I'm glad Patrice called me to ask me to be in the last study with you. Um, we don't know each other very well, but I can't wait to get to know you as a sister and as a brother in Christ. And um, I'm just, but it did, I really saw your heart in the study. And I saw how much you want to follow and, and be like Christ. And um, that was uplifting to me and I needed this today so thank you Cannon should I yeah <laughs> y'all heard what Saul said yeah let, let his best friends go next Kenneth, Kenneth, he don't took my best friend let it. <laughs> um Ebony oh, okay. Ebony um well for both of you guys I think I feel like this is not a coincidence that you guys have moved here. Um, there is, I mean, it's just amazing how God works just to know. It blew me away just your, your, your story mm. Mm. on how you are who you are. You're like you're Reuben's dad. So it's just, uh, <laughs> and just the relationship, it's really, it's great to see just the relationship that you guys have. And um, 
it, it's all God. Amen. Um, Ebony, I, I'm, I can't. I feel like I know that um, you get homesick, and I, I truly, when you guys came here, when I met you guys, I feel like I've, it's deeper family. It mm -hmm. was just, I knew y'all knew them, y'all, y'all family, so we family. So <laughs> I just. Um, it, it's just been amazing seeing you in the studies and um, seeing your heart change and um, the love, seeing you look at your husband, that, you know, you're just loving your husband. And um, I, I, there's, all, there's only up to go from here. You know, I, I just, um, I'm proud of you guys and I you know, can't wait to be brothers and sisters in Christ. Hey. <laughs> Um, it's been great getting to know you, Ebony. Um, me and Ruben go back and, you know, we both know Sour together. Okay, I'm just, but uh, guys, it, is, it has been great. Just as Shadarian said, uh, I've always known who you were, Ruben, just from just conversations with Sour. Yep. And for you guys to move here, it blows my mind like, wow, God, just seeing your plan and your time unfold and to witness it. And to see how you guys just allow God's word to move your hearts that even at your age to say, okay, God, if this is what your word says, this is what I'm going to do. And um, just to see how your hearts have responded, to see how you've just stepped up and wanting to lead your family, how you've even said, you know, if the word says to allow you to lead, I'm going to let you lead and support you. And uh, that's just been encouraging to just see you guys just respond immediately. To that and to make the decision to want to get baptized today so i look forward to us just being brothers and sisters in christ spending more time together fellowshipping and uh just our families just loving one another hey. last but not least Sam patrice <laughs> so here we go now reuben of all the people here you've known me the longest about 34 years um, I have been a Christian 25 years, and from that moment, I started praying for you. Wanted you to know God, because I knew the great joy that we had. And when, when um, I forget, maybe I was talking to you and you told me you were moving here and I didn't believe you. But um, <laughs> I was telling everybody, the women we were meeting on Zoom about you two guys and to pray for you and that you were coming. And so it's really exciting for me because I've gotten to know you. Like, I mean, the last time I really like spent any time with you, you we were like 17, 18, maybe. And I've gotten to know you and I'm seeing the spiritual side of you. And it's really exciting for me. I am... So happy for Ebony to have you become a man of God. Like, um, and all this time we've known each other and you've been married to Ebony about eight years. I, before they came, I'd never had a conversation with Ebony. Not one conversation. And I repent of that. But when I knew you was coming, we started talking and we instantly started bounding, realizing we had so much in common. And the one thing I saw is the desire for your family. For your family to have a spiritual foundation. For your husband to lead you spiritually. What I've seen you even more is you take the word of God seriously. Yeah. You take studying it seriously. You take obeying it seriously. Even if you have to fight through things. And I really appreciate that. Like you look at it with a sober mind and a sober heart and like, okay, God, show me this if I'm not seeing it. God, thank you for showing me this. And I really, that's a great example for me and all of us. I'm really excited to have both of you as a brother and sister in Christ. Like, this is going to be amazing for our family. Um, I'm just excited for the things to come of what God's going to do with all of us. You know, we already have fun together, but we really get to be spiritual together. And I, I really am grateful for that and excited to see y'all go down in that water. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen, family. So, um, like I told, I told Ruben, me and Royal pray every week. And Royal prays for my kids by name every single week. And I told Reuben, I said, we've been praying for Reuben. We just didn't know which Reuben. 
and I said, you know, I told him last night, I said, um, you know, this is God. Because this is a blended family. And we've been a blended family for a long time. And who knew that when we got married, that 25 years later, Ruben's dad would be becoming, becoming a Christian. Yeah. You know, um, and it's God, now, you know, I see it now as God, I mean, we've co-parented for so long that we, we like brothers, <laughs> you know, so this is like icing on the cake. And for me, this is, this is, this is, you're talking about God and what God can do. This is God. Amen. Because this is, the, we, we can't take credit for this. Yep, that's right. And when I say we met, when we met Ebony, it, it, she, she just fit right in. I mean, because the three of us knew each other. You know, Ebony was kind of like the odd man out. But she blended right in. And, and, and I think the first conversation me and Ebony had when, we, when I picked her up from the airport, she said, well, what do you want my kids to call you? I said, uh, uncle? She was like, all right, that's what they're going to call you, Uncle Solomon. <laughs> but it was just an instant bond. And I think the thing that was encouraging about y'all studies is that, man, every single thing you got took to heart. The desire to please God. That was like the desire to please God. Like you took everything to heart and was like, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. That's so encouraging. Because you study with people, a lot of people, and they, they get, you know, things don't go that way sometimes. But when you see people who love for God, and, you, and we pray people who have open hearts that want to please God, and that's what you guys have done for me, for us. And I'm so encouraged, man, that, that you, you stepped up and somehow you wanted to lead your family. And I told you it was a choice and you made the choice. <laughs> you know, and, and it's so encouraging to see how you guys, you guys are completely different than you was a couple weeks ago. And it's only because of God. You know, it's only because of God. And it's, it's encouraging, I think we all watch God transform you guys in front of our very eyes mm -hmm. to see who you guys have become with God. And, and I'm so encouraged, man. I love both of y'all. Yep. Welcome to the family. Our family has grown even bigger. Yep. So, but that's to God's glory. <laughs> I'll get back in here with you. Well, Ruben and um, Ebony, I'm going to give, uh, give y'all a chance to share if you'd like to say anything before we uh, immerse you under the water and come out a new person. <laughs> <laughs> and we told him that you cannot hold your wife down long. <laughs> Let up. <laughs> You know, so he said, I won't. He said, but I might do this. I said, <laughs> he was just teasing. <laughs> you want to say anything? Oh, you want to say? Uh, yes, I would. Oh. Um, I'm just so grateful. But God, because this journey was really hard for me because I lost faith. But I got on my knees and I said, God, if you don't help me, I'm dead. And he said, Therese, I just love her so much because she said she prayed for me. But then God would send me all these good men in his church and and he was talking to me every morning. Y'all, I got up there. I'm like, Lord, <laughs> I heard you last night. And he was just reinforcing it and reinforcing it. Like, I want to save you, Ebony. And even when I was fighting with my flesh, he said, only I can live here. And I'm like, okay. But God, please, one more time, just show me. So last night I'm reading Exodus. And then Jamie started preaching that part. But God said, Ebony, I'm taking you this route because I don't want you to fight a war. You can't fight by yourself. You are my Israel. I'm taking you out of Egypt. Just be still, child. So I'm so grateful. And y'all don't understand, but God, I told God, I said, Lord, I'm withholding nothing. I surrender to you. Amen. Amen. I'm gone. So I thank you guys, and you just don't know how much every one of you mean, because I don't have, let me take that back, because I have a new family. Amen. So I am so grateful. Hey, man, that's <laughs> you want to say anything? No. I'm not say she said no. <laughs> oh, he did that at our wedding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whatever she said. <laughs> you know, I, I, I understand, what y'all want y'all know how much her tears are so real. Mm -hmm. Our very first study, she just walked in and said, I was thinking about getting a divorce. And we told her to just trust God. 
and let's get in the word of God. And to see where they are now, see where she is now, it's all God. She really opened her heart and surrendered and trusted the word. And so did Reuben. So Reuben and in there, but I have a couple questions to ask you. So I'm going to ask you at the same time. Do y'all believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God and died for our sins? Yeah. And God raised him from the dead. <laughs> you yeah. Yes. Yes. Amen. <laughs> and what is your confession? Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Amen. <laughs> By y'all confession, Reuben, Sawa, Ken, and uh, Tim will be able to baptize your name in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit for the forgiveness of your sins. And you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And then you would turn around and turn you, Sawa, Ken, will baptize your wife. And she will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the forgiveness of her sins. Hey, hey. Amen. And the church says.